The grandeur and richness of Alaska's beauty is a reflection of nature's genius. Glacier-garbed mountains stretch to the horizon. Braided rivers meander through valleys carved out eons ago. Alaska is vast and magnificent, but its beauty is balanced by a sometimes punishing climate. Three hundred and twenty miles above the Arctic Circle lies the northernmost town in the United States. When the sun sets in mid-November, it isn't seen again until late January, and temperatures can reach forty below. This town at the top of the world is called Barrow, Alaska, and on this blue tundra, just a touchdown pass from the Arctic Ocean, plays the one and only Arctic high school football team in America. The Barrow Whalers. Oh, nice! We're no huge football program compared with Texas or Alabama or California. This is football at the top of the world. Barrow, Alaska, a town so isolated it's not connected by road to the rest of Alaska. Nearly 5,000 people live here. 61% of them. The Nupiat Eskimo, native to this part of Alaska, they've survived thousands of years by living off the land, subsistence hunting, fishing, and whaling. As a community, they continue to embrace the ancient, their heritage and cultural traditions. They also embrace the modern, high school football. Far from Massachusetts, I tell you, it's a different way of living, different way of looking at life. Sometimes, you know, five thousand people live here in Barrow. We're not on a major road system or anything like that. We don't have McDonald's. We don't have the movie theaters. We don't have the mall. If those things are important to you, we have two planes that leave a day. You can be on one of them. You don't have to be here. In 2006, the school district saw that there was a problem with dropout rate in the high school. They were asking the students, what would they like to have at their school that would help them stay in school? And so the kids wanted to have a football program. Since that time, that dropout rate has decreased significantly, and it gave kids a reason to stay in school. You got to be committed from the start to the end. Up! It's all about our kids here. If there's a way that we can keep kids engaged in school and get our kids to learn and grow and become positive, healthy adults in our community, why not take a chance on it on football? I don't want to hear nobody whining. My legs are tight, coach. My legs are like jelly, coach. There's some schools in Lower 48. They have their varsity, their JV. Here, we have less than 250 students in our school. We struggle to get you know, 20 to 30 kids out. But we get a quality of football player that is unbelievable from the numbers that we have. Listen, we got small numbers, but we're going to take this all the way. All in or all out. out. In late July, the snowless, ice-free Arctic seems almost tame, until the wind begins to change and the fall freeze takes hold. All right, here we go. You got to hurry. Get lined up. Just running vertical. Vertical. Just yards away from the field, the Arctic generates a negative wind chill, 
giving a blistering new meaning to the term 12th man. This wind is like a beast today. <laughs> Playing in cold weather, it's a whole different ball game. This is game weather. Yeah, there's a toughness that kids have to develop here that you just don't have anywhere else. Go! Don't be last! Don't be last! Don't be last! Being able to play football where you probably would least expect football to be is such an honor. It just makes you want to go harder. I play the running back position here in Barrow. We go through a regular practice every day, no matter how cold it is. Up here, it gets snowy, rainy, and it's really windy. Last year, we kicked it off one time against the wind and it passed the 50-yard line, and then it came back, and I caught it. It was so cool. And it makes it much harder to throw, so we're more of a running team or short passes at home. That's a tough throw in the wind. The world sees us as a frozen land. They would think, how can people live up there where there's 24-hour darkness for like a month, and it's very cold, polar bears, and they live off of subsistence. Subsistence living is living off your own land, living off the resources you can find. Uh, you know, we eat fish, seal, walrus, the bowhead whale, which takes like the whole community to help with one whale so that we may divide it amongst the whole town. Subsistence living is an honor. You're being able to do what your ancestors were able to do. It's been passed down to each generation. Yeah! I've been Eskimo dancing since I was able to walk. There's a rhythm, and you have to have a rhythm on the football field. And Eskimo dancing guys get low and stomp. I really think the culture and heritage is more important than football. It'll always be here. But we need to always remember that our culture and heritage, some of it is dying, and we need to work hard to keep our culture alive and make sure the generations after us know it. It is a big, serious movement to the team. I can be doing cultural stuff while doing football. I just want to go through the season and be a different person than I was in the beginning and win a championship. We're gonna be here. Boom. With three weeks before the opener, Coach Houston faces a familiar coaching dilemma, a quarterback controversy. It's always a gamble in your choice of picking a quarterback. Um, eager to see who who wants it the most. Run it out, run it out. Let's go. Beautiful. Come on. There you go. Come on. Good job. Last one. Vita. There we go. There we go. This is burning. I'm excited going into my senior year. I'm moving from being a running back to a quarterback. He needs a diaper change. <laughs> I have two younger brothers. They're the best siblings I can ever ask for. Are you guys going to go to practice with me? And we're all really close. We kind of have to be since we live in a small house and we're all crammed up together. My family likes watching me play football. I think they're really proud of me. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Got to breathe. Get it up, get it up, David, get it up. <laughs> Throughout my freshman and sophomore year, I regret not working hard enough. So I started as hard as I can, trying to get stronger and smarter and better. Come on! David is eager to play quarterback. That's it, man. I like that. I want to see that again. I like this so much. Again. But he has a stinky attitude sometimes, especially when he makes a mistake. Hey, David, let's go, man. Get ready. Hey, get David out of here. He wants to just stand around and wait. He don't want to play football today. A quarterback. You get down, you throw an interception. You know, a lot of mishaps happen. I want somebody that's not going to lose it. Here we go. You two switch. Hop up, Trav. Go quarterback. Here we go. Perfect. Here you go, Trav. I feel like I could start at quarterback this year, but I really won't know until me and David start battling out for the starting position. But I really think I could beat him out. I have a good arm. I got good speed. That's it, Trav. Woo! Travis Adams, he may be one of the best athletes we have in school. David, go quarterback. I don't like the angle that he has to take to get there every time. We're, we're going to change that, OK? I'm ready to play quarterback, because I already know all the plays, so pretty confident. 
There you go. Nice. Ah, pick the wrong quarterback. It could be a disastrous season for you. Nice, nice, nice. That looked good right there. I moved here three months ago. Alaska is just a new place, a new home. A new home for me. This is the well bone. This is pretty big. Yeah. You know what I want to do right now? Just take a swim. Yeah, I want to <laughs> swim too. But I can't. It's, the water's too cold. I was raised in Anaheim, California. I was born back in the island of Samoa. I was back in California. We have a stoplight. <laughs> Yeah, you guys don't have any signal stuff. Back in California, I used to be a troublemaker. Alcohol, drinking, smoking was the answer to everything. Anger, violence. With my older brother, um, when he got stabbed, that's when it hit me, because uh, I never expected any of my brothers and sisters to get hurt. I came up here to switch my life around and um, live with my uncle, my cousin TJ, who was also on the football team, and their family. Come here. You're doing prayers. Yeah. 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 Once I came to Barrow, I knew things were going to be different. What's up, John? When I got off the plane, I was like, wow, I'm actually in Barrow. What am I doing? <laughs> and then the milk? 10 to 12 bucks. You know, back in California, you know how much milk costs? Four, Four bucks. bucks. Hit. Hit. Go, go, go. When I play, I'm not only playing for myself. I play for the family that I carry with me. OK, let's work hard. Those who commit will be champions. Just running vertical, vertical. Ah, look at that thing sneaking through your hands. Catch the tip, right? With only two and a half weeks left until the first game of the season, frustration mounts as Coach Houston contends with the team's tardiness and lack of commitment. Commitment is important because we have small numbers on our team. I mean, you know, today we got kids who chose to be late. When you're tasked to do a job with small numbers, then we need you to show up every day because there's somebody that's counting on you. Hey, bring it up. What, what time is it? What time are we supposed to be out here today? Huh? Are we late today? Why are we late today, man? Anybody have an answer? Is that commitment? Huh? If I got to get my ass up and be here by that time, who should be here before me? But anything else, like work? Think they're going to allow you to come in a half hour later? Well, they're going to send your ass packing, man. Like, I don't even want to be here right now with you. That's all I ask for, an ounce of respect. Us coaches, man. We come out here to be here with you, to give you something, to pass it on to you. Take a knee. Hey, Spence. Sometimes we bring in coaches that can help us out with game planning, scheming, preparation. You guys got to get excited about who you are as individuals. If you can't do that, you're never going to be a good football player. You got to put E on everything you're involved in. Excitement, encouragement, empowerment, Education, it's the only way you're going to get better. The better your attitude is, the higher you go. The lower you're and the worse your attitude is, you're not going to go very far, man. I don't want that for you. Being in the lower 48, we take a whole lot of things for granted. Me, me, me. Me, me. Watch out. Watch out. No mic. No mic. No mic. Fail. When you understand what it takes for them to survive up here, I mean, if they can hunt a whale, and live in these conditions, then, then football's a cakewalk. Good move, Vita. Good move, Vita. Good move. That's the play right there. Say hey. Move. Come on, great effort. That's good effort. Let's go. Hit. In just two weeks, Barrow will open the season against Juno Douglas a team that ranked second in the state last year. Here we go again! For Coach Houston, the question is, are the Whalers ready? Here we go. Hey, man, good day. We're going to take it one game at a time. It's time for us to get some bear meat. 
Our first game is against Juno Douglas, which is a bigger school. I think they're maybe like three times the size of who we are. They're a good program. First time that we're ever playing them, it's gonna be a challenge. And if our boys come to play and use the talents and the gifts that they've been given, we will do well. Those who commit will be what? Champions. That's okay, that's what we're talking about, man. So we gotta get this machine of football all to work in unison. Biggest hopes for this season is getting the message across to the young men about what it takes to be committed to a team, a family, a community, to their school. This season, I want to stay committed and come out and do big things. Also, get better as a person, not just a player on the field. It's my last year. I want to work as hard as I can. I don't want to regret anything. It's tough to compete in a place like Barrow, Alaska, but if we can help create better people, we have a better community and a better place to live. If we can get that message across, I'll be happy however the season turns out. All right, brotherhood on three. One, two, three. Brotherhood! On the next episode of Football Town, Barrow, Alaska. Starting two a days. Hell week. Two great athletes. Nice. We want to see one of them playing quarterback. Rip! Knock my damn glasses off. That's a joke. That's a joke. Oh, but I just don't want kids to see that action and think that it's okay to do. Go get on the bus. Go.